Hey guys and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will have some fun with blend spaces. And uh, I am serious, this is going to be a lot of fun. Because we will go through a sample file that you will be able to download and insert your own animations into. A blend space sample file. So what does it mean? It simply means you will get a file, drop it into your project folder and it's good to go. We will pick that file up in the editor and replace or insert all of our animations that we need for basic locomotion. By the way, my name is Roma and I am the technical evangelist. If you are new to the series, you might be wondering what you are currently looking at. We made a cool little game project called Breeze and introduced some parts and pieces of Breeze to you in our live streams. You play as a small robot dropped somewhere on a low poly island trying to find fuel to fill up your rocket and return from your vacation. During our original stream event, each mechanic in the game was introduced one at a time, including some commentary from our resident developer experts at Crytek who also work on our own games. Now we will bring you all of that and much much more, as we are adding step by step tutorials to the mix enabling you to create your own island filled with beautiful low poly assets and some platforming game mechanics you can enjoy. So let's start with the tutorial. First we don't even need to start the editor. The example blend space file can be dropped right into your project. Preferably I would like you to drop it somewhere inside your character folder where your animations are. which simply means create a folder named blend spaces. When you have dropped it like it's hot, we can open the editor now. And of course at that point, I expect you to already have the animations for basic locomotion and a character of course. If not, don't worry, just check one of the previous tutorials about getting animations into CryEngine and continue from there. I'm also assuming you have the editor open by now. We don't need to open any levels, we just need to navigate to the tools bar, then to animation and open our beloved character tool. Pro tip again, you can also use the search bar in the top right corner to get a quicker access to this editor. Maximize the character tool because we are going to spend a little bit more of time inside it. Please navigate to your character definition file, which represents your character, skin files, blend shapes, attachments and the animations, wherever they might be. My character can be found under Objects, Characters, Player Character. There is my weirdly named CDF, which is short for character definition file. Double click that file and now you see all the settings which we previously explained in our character tutorials which is of course linked in the video description down below. Because if you are new to this one, we have a whole series dedicated to creating a walking and running robot from scratch with animations, blend spaces and a full setup in the editor as a playable main character. Don't miss that one. But let's continue on the right side. Um, you'll see what's inside that CDF. You see the skeleton file, which contains a lot of data that holds our robot together. Skin attachments, their settings and of course the material. Although on the left side, we can see the animations that our character was associated with. And here we have a folder called blend spaces. If we open that one, we might discover a locomotion blend space file that is quietly waiting for us to work with. One thing is missing though. The blend space preview. We need to visualize the blend spaces that we are creating. Navigate to the burger menu, go to view and open the blend space preview. Put it somewhere where you have a good overview of the settings and the preview window of course. Now let's put the jokes aside. Although this is a sample file and you will have to do what I do, I still recommend watching this tutorial right here to have a better understanding on blend spaces, which are spaces that blend our animations together. Well, it sounds simple, but the idea of it is quite complex and it might take a while until it clicks. So please watch this tutorial right here. First, we need to break down the different tabs that we see down here and the settings of our blend spaces. 
Dimensions are already covered. We, we got the settings right, which are used for simple 3D locomotion, so you don't need to touch them. But if you are still curious and you want to understand what they are there for, please watch the already mentioned tutorial, linked in the description as always down below. Examples is something that we need to tackle now. You see, we have five examples of idle animation. Of course, on your end, you will get errors on the examples, because the engine does not know what animations to choose and where to choose from. So all you need to do at your end is replace the placeholders with your own animations. You won't be seeing those errors at the screen right now, but you will have them. But don't worry, just replace the animations that you have with the ones that are shown in the example files, which simply means that you have to stick to the original order of examples. When it says idle animation, replace it with an idle animation. To replace an animation, click on the folder icon and choose the correct animation. When the example file suggests an idle animation, please use an idle animation. And if the example files requires a walking animation, then replace it with your own walking animation. It's that simple. Because after you replaced all the animations, you just hit the save file and you're good to go. But we are here for the logic behind it, so stick with me. As you see, we have five examples of idle animations. If you look at the blend space preview, that perfectly makes sense. It's the beginning of an animation, which means almost everything starts at that point. We go from idle to walk, from idle to run, from idle to jogging backwards and so on and so on. That's why we have a full front row with idles. Next up is a mixture of strafe walks, walking and jogging, or, or walking if you prefer so, but backwards. Again, looking at the preview, those constellations make sense if those animations are played right after an idol. And right up at the top, at the tip, we have the run and strafe animations, with the proper space between running and idle animations, as the distance you travel while running increases compared to walking. You see, you have a 3D space right now. You have a starting point and you need to adjust your animations to that 3D space. If you're walking forwards, well, walking is the middle point between idle and running. So it might belong right in the middle of our grid, right? And running is the next logical step after walking, but it comes from walking, so it might be in the middle as well. But it needs to have much more space between the last two animations, because again, when you run, you travel a bigger distance while running. Same goes for left and right strafes. When you strafe, you walk. So a strafe comes before walk and idle, but is mixed with a walk animation. A left strafe, for example, must then be placed to the left of our walking animation, but one grid bar ahead of idle. Does that make sense? So this is how the grid works and how you need to adapt to 3D space of locomotion. That means you can create as many examples as you want to, but you need to place them correctly. It starts from zero, right in the bottom corner and goes to the left. Here you see a 5 and a 10, which does make sense if we go to the annotations. And annotations are the rules that we must obey. To get a little bit more technical, with blend spaces, we treat animation blending as a geometrical problem. The setup and the internal structures of a blend space is similar to a model mesh, with a vertex buffer and an index buffer. Each animation clip in the example list represents a point in a coordinate system. In other words, we associate each animation with a 1D, 2D or 3D position in a space and the list of examples is the vertex buffer. The tricky part of course is to convert animations into positions in a space, but it's easy if you can follow my explanation and a process like so. Let's go with the first one. We have number 4 here, which represents the examples that have this annotation. We see it goes from 0 to 5, then from 6 to 1. The next one will be from 1 to 6 and from 7 to 2. The third one is from 2 to 7 and from 8 to 3. You see where I'm heading with this? The annotations are handled as a polygon shape. That's how we define or annotate which asset can be blended in a reasonable way. 
This kind of geometrical relationship between animation clips is very useful for understanding the way 3D blend spaces work. In a 3D blend space, we have tetrahedrons, pyramids and prisms. All of them have a ground plane 3 to 4 points and a tip 1 to 2 points. If the tip points up, the vertices on the ground plane must be annotated counterclockwise, which is exactly the case here. Ok ok ok, enough of that technical nonsense. Well, actually no, I really hope that gives you a better understanding of blend spaces in CryEngine. And of course I left out a lot of in-depth technical detail. There is a lot to lean into. But if you want to learn more about blend spaces, we are here for you. Or precisely our technical writers are. Check out the blend spaces documentation page linked in the description down below. So guys, we talked a lot about technical stuff now and we've tried to explain the logic behind it. But in the end, it's just an example file. That means maybe you don't need that information at all. So what you want to do and can do is simply replace the example files with the animations that you have. Everything is set for your animations to go and hopefully be useful as a locomotion blend space file that you can use from now on. You don't need additional settings or anything else, you just need this example file. So go download that bad boy over here and I will see you in the next one. But before I go, as usual guys, I will need you to give me a thumbs up on that video and if you want you can share it with your friends to spread the awesome knowledge of CryEngine or something like that. Well. In any case, if you have any questions, if you want to share something with us, our official social media channels are always there for you and, and are also linked in the video description down below. As always, like everything is linked in the video down description below. I cannot stress that enough. Um, yeah, and as usual, you can check out our official Discord server where the community shares some awesome stuff and help you with technical questions you might have. I'll see you in the next one guys, thank you for watching.